That's a sad story, but it's not the whole story. Because there's another way in which her story is true of you and me, and this is it. Second thing is, my story involves a choice. Help me out. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got a choice, Bubba. I've had somebody tell me just uh, two weeks ago, they said, well, you know, everybody has to sin. No, they do not. You choose to sin. You, cho you make the choice. You cannot be Flip Wilson and go around saying, the devil made me do it. It don't work. It don't work. You choose to sin. You make the choice. You make the choice of what you do today. You'll make the choice of what you do tomorrow. You'll make the choice of the way you spend your life. So when we get to the end of it, if Jesus tarries, you'll look back and say, thank you, Lord, for helping me make right choices, or I've wasted a whole life. Listen to this, Joshua chapter 2, verse 4. But the woman, I'll go into 14, so hang on to your shoes. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them, this is the part they left out, one of the parts, up onto the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land. I love it in the movie, this part where the fear took hold. And that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. I have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage fell because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven, above and on earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family. She asked for help. They did not offer it. Because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. Stop there. We'll catch up in just a minute. Now, it's easy to read the story like this without fully appreciating what's going on. Number one thing is we need to put ourselves in Rahab's shoes. Uh, Teresa and I was talking the other day. Did y'all see on the news where the, the house got swallowed up in a, a sinkhole? Now, I told Teresa first thing, because they said that happens in that city commonly, or that area commonly. I told her, I said, I'd be moving. My daddy raised no dummy. But you know what she told me? She said, no, you wouldn't. She says, I know you. You're a creature of habit. You love to be around your family. You love to be close to your kids. You love to be close to your grandkids and your brothers and your sister. Uh, of course, I thought, I'll make them all move with me. Don't say no word. You know, I can handle tornadoes, hurricanes, and storms. I can't handle the earth falling out from under my feet. I feel the earth move over the stuff over there. But anyway, but I've seen about Rahab. Think about all that she did. Put yourself in her shoes. She is giving up her city. She is giving up what she knows best. She's making a choice, and thank God it's the right choice. I'm talking to somebody now. Somebody needs to start making right choices. Sometimes you can't even make right choices on your own. That's when you need to sit down with counselors. The Word of God says that there's wisdom in the counsel of many. You need to start finding somebody who has made choices that you are making and they've made the right ones. Don't look for some person that had made wrong choice after wrong choice and then expect them to give you good answers or biblical scripture or answers to follow up on. You need to find someone who has come where you're going and give you the right decisions or help you make right choices. Still, only you can hear from the Holy Spirit. Only you can have peace of God in your mind and heart and know that this is what you're supposed to do. But, if you've been there 40 years, evidently your listeners broke. So until it gets fixed, I would listen to somebody who's got a good listener. Okay, when I do, no, that's amen. That's on me. This has helped me, Jesus. <laughs> she faced a decision. She could have turned the spies away. She could have turned them in. She didn't have to help them. The safe choice would probably be stay out of it. Lay low. Keep out from under the fire. But given a choice between two sides, the Lord's side's, side and the other side she chose the Lord. Help me out. Turn your neighbor's side. I've chosen the Lord. Come on. Every time, every time we need to choose for the Lord's side. Always. And I wonder if something was working in Rahab. You remember when you got saved? Those of you who have been saved 
something was already working in you. You didn't come to, to church or kneel down at your home and all of a sudden, or you know, walk into life, oh, I need to be saved and fall on your face. Something was already working in you. Whether your troubles that you've made, life turned totally sour and you found yourself lost or by yourself and you finally heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you and you called out to Him. Something was working in Rahab. And I wonder if the status quo to her felt like it's time for the status quo. You know, I've done this over and over again, and it's not working. Somebody, I've got to hit you today, somebody, you've done the status quo over and over and over, and you still end up with the same thing you've always got. You're always in that same mess. You find yourself in those same relationships. You find yourself with that same thing in your hand or in that same place you shouldn't be. Somebody here today needs to say, I'm tired of the status quo. I don't have enough time to waste anymore. It's time for the status go. I'm ready to be somewhere else. I'm ready to be somebody else. I'm not talking about physically going to another place. I'm talking about finally in myself knowing who I am in Christ and walking according to His Word. Being revolutionized in my mind not to be doing the status quo but to let God Almighty show me where He wants to be. It's time to make the right choice, Bubba. It's time, sis, to make the right choice. You've done this over and over again. How many times are you going to walk around this mountain? Oh, help me out. Point to somebody say, he's talking to you because I got it all together. No, don't do that. Some of you all be lying. A bunch of liars. I can't do that. Do you know our God is a God who specializes in setting the captive free? He'll do what it takes. He'll do what it takes. Listen, remember Joseph's story? He's the kid brother. There's a 10 older than him, one later younger than him. But he's the baby right now, and his own brother sell him into slavery, and God Almighty takes him from the pit to the pinnacle. He is the prime minister of all of Egypt, and he's a Hebrew. He did not have a European accent. <laughs> well, I think very much so. He spoke Hebrew. He had to learn how to speak Egyptian. And God took him from the very lowest part in the dungeon up to the pinnacle of being second in command of all of Egypt. His ancestors later on who followed him, 400 years of slavery, and God takes them after 400 years of slavery, three and a half million people. Talk about grits. Just think about all the manna. Manna pudding, manna bread, manna steak, manna, manna. That sounds like a hippie thing. Man, that's bad. <laughs> uh, over and over again, feeding three and a half million people. But God specializes in setting the captives free. Remember Israel. This, this is going to sound like some of our lives. Israel calls out to God. God raises them up and they defeat kingdom after kingdom. They're occupying land after land and all of a sudden they get full of themselves. And they stop serving God. And they start serving idols. And they start getting an idol in their relationship with the Lord. And then other kingdoms start conquering them. So what do they do? They fall on their face and they call out to God. God sends a judge, a female or a male, sends a judge. And that judge uh, helps them be set free again through the power and anointing of God. So they're giving God the glory and they're uh, serving the Lord again. And then here we go. Y'all stay with me. They're just walking out of the church. They're not going to pull a gun or nothing. Uh, uh, they got places to be. But still, and then we have, here they go again. They get lax in their relationship with the Lord. They fall again away from the Lord. Other kingdoms come and start torturing them and, and putting them in prison. They call out to God. God sends a judge. The judge rises up, leads them out of captivity. They start conquering again. Over and over again, they make bad choices. Some of you serve God like a yo-yo. I'm in, I'm out. I'm in, I'm out. Or a boomerang. <laughs> I'm on my own again. Oh, I need Jesus. <laughs> y'all like the sound effects? <laughs> I have more talents than y'all could ever dream of. <laughs> right now, my head feels like it's about to explode. <laughs> so pray for me, all right? Remember that st those stories? Our God is a God who sets captives free. He shatters our chains. He delivers us from sins. But He will not do so without your and my consent. We have to say, Lord, I'm yours. Everything I am, everything I'm not. Everything I have, everything I don't have. I am yours. My marriage is yours. My home is yours. My car is yours. Every breath that I can't breathe right now is yours. My children are yours. My grandchildren are yours. Everything, sooner or later, we got to completely say, 
Lord, I am tired of the chains. I'm tired of the same sin controlling me. I'm tired of life controlling me. I want my steps to be ordered by the Lord. Because the Word says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. I need to make a right choice for a change and let you open the door instead of me forcing that door open. I need to make a right choice for a change. Then you shut the door instead of me trying to push it open all the time and listen to your voice. But he will not do that without our consent. Like Rahab, each of us faces a decision. Sin, salvation. Slavery or freedom. You got the choice. That'd be a good t-shirt, wouldn't it? You got the choice. We can blame God for every mess I get. I can blame God for every mess I can get into. But I know from my life experience of 54 years, every mess I ever gotten into, I got me there. I'm good at it. Thank God God started directing my steps and, and helping me. If you haven't yet done so, I hope today, the day, is when you say no to the status quo and yes to the status quo. Now somebody in their spirit said, yeah, I'm about to leave that old geezer. Listen to me. That's not what I'm talking about. If you're married, unless you're being abused, Sandy, I wasn't talking to you. I see you smiling back there. And Jeff was sweating. Uh, no, you stay in it. You believe God for it. And God will restore. He always does when both give everything to the Lord. It takes both. I understand that. I've got some. One has done it all the way. And what do you do? So well, I've done everything I can do. What do you do? You keep doing all you can do. You just love Jesus. You love them. When they're asleep, punch them in the nose and the back sleep. So, oh, I'm sorry. That's, no, I said, don't do that. Don't do that. That's what Teresa does to me. Yeah, you're welcome. It's all free, girls. I'm not charging.